<laughs> yeah, maybe it'll start on fire and I'll have a really awesome YouTube video. <laughs> yeah, thanks. So, uh, first fire on the new engine in the Porsche replica. Oh, well, should have charged the battery. <laughs> Morgan, Wild West Garage. So, just back working on this little uh, Porsche job here. Um, so, uh, had a little bit of trouble with this thing. Um, and, uh, you know, inevitably when you're doing custom work, you're going to have some problems. Um, I guess none of them were really our fault. Um, uh, couple things, well three things really, um, four things. The um, first issue we had was with the um, fan housing. The engine builder, he supplied a bigger um, oil cooler, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and um, so I had to modify the uh, fan housing to fit that bigger oil cooler and I did make a video and post I posted a video of that so if you want to take a look at, at my videos you can find that one. Um, <clears throat> the second problem we had was with the, um, the uh, I guess they call it the power pulley and uh, I'll turn the camera around in a second and I'll explain that in some more detail. It wasn't lining up with the alternator so anyways I'll, I, like I said I'll explain that in a bit. Um, what was the other issue we had? Oh, and then uh, um, <clears throat> we got the engine in the car and fired it up, and the oil pressure was low. It was about, uh, you know, 15, to 12, you know, somewhere between. It was kind of 10 to 15 psi. You know, you know, it wasn't wasn't impressive anyway. So, shut the engine down and just started scratching our heads a little bit and. Um, Turned out it was a uh, pressure relief valve, and I'll, I'll explain that in detail too. I'll draw a little picture of that, and what happened with that, and what we did, and, you know, and everything. And uh, so, uh, anyways, let's let's get into that now. So for the power pulley issue, <clears throat> what was happening was uh, this is a aftermarket pulley, and. Um, so when we pulled this off the original engine, um, I guess Simon had forgot or maybe just didn't realize that there was a shim in behind, behind this thing uh, against the shoulder on the crank. So basically the, the, <clears throat> the pulley went in too far. So the belt was at an angle like this and, and the pulley was actually uh, coming up against the um, the sheet metal on the engine and locking up the engine. So, um, so we went and uh, t took a look at the the other engine, and sure enough, there was a shim in there. So we put it, we assembled it with the shim, and it still wasn't lining up as good as I thought it should be. So I made a, another shim out of an eight out of 18 gauge sheet metal, and uh, <coughs> put it in there. Actually, I think I got, yeah, here I got, I, I started making, I started up making two, so here's the, you can see where the keyway goes, and I, so I drilled a hole and sized it, and then I have to, um, you know, cut along the scribe line. So I ended up not using this one, but um, <clears throat> anyways, that got, that got the pulley lined up reasonably well, it's, and it's kind of odd because, um, if you know how um, these these pulleys work and how Volkswagen keeps oil from coming out of the the, the power the pulley side of the engine, is there's no actual rubber seal in there. So it, on the crankshaft there's an oil slinger, and then 
then those two shims I was talking about. And then on the outside diameter of the, of uh, I guess you want to call it the sleeve that's on this pulley, it's, there's a thread cut in there. So basically what it does is as oil comes out along that surface, those threads push it back into the engine. Seems to work. But the trouble with shimming that pulley out, the more you shim it out, the less of that threads inside the, the, the casing. And I would imagine that screw effect becomes less effective. So I'll, I'll just, you know, I'm just gonna draw you a little picture. Uh, oh, and another thing I had to do is, uh, once we had those shims in there, there wasn't enough thread engagement for the bolt. So I had to machine uh, uh, recess in the face of this to get the, uh, the bolt further in. And there's lots of meat there to, to work with, so that worked out really well. So what, what basically what you got is you got, uh, hopefully this pen works, you got the crankshaft, there's a shoulder on it, it comes out like this, and there's of course there's a keyway on there, or key as well. And then there's an internal thread, runs in here. <clears throat> and then right here, I, I think it's got an oil slinger in it, I'm pretty sure it does. So there's an oil slinger on here like this. And then our shims go in here. So I had a thin shim. I guess I can draw it right across here. Thin shim, there's the oil slinger. And then a thicker shim, which is the one that was on there originally. And then our pulley goes in against that. And I guess it's kind of out here like this because it ended up going pretty flush with the... So here's the pulley. It's part of this piece here. And then so, and then it, and it kind of flares, it flared out like this on the face of it. And so what I did, and so that was flush across there. So what I did was I machined this in like this so the bolt could get better thread engagement in there. And there's a washer in here too. So, so Without machining that down, I think we were catching maybe one thread, so that wasn't that wasn't good at all. So, so anyways, that that's that pretty much explains that. So, um, <clears throat> and then on the oil pressure relief, so so like I said, we fired it up. I didn't have adequate oil pressure, so on so so I thought I wonder if. Maybe the spring's too weak in the pressure relief valve, or, or we left the spring out maybe. Because we did, we did take the um, plug out because Simon has a, a temperature gauge that screws in in place of the plug, it's an oil temperature gauge. So <clears throat> anyway, so this, this is basically the deal here. So the, the Pressure relief valve. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's bored. It's, there's a bore goes in, in. So this, and this thing is uh, is right up at the back. Of the, well, I guess it's called it's the front of the engine on this car, but it would normally be the back where the where the bell housing is and the transmission clutch is right here. So um, it's it's right up in kind of the clo close to the flange where it bolts onto the transmission. So, so what it is, is uh, it's a bore, and then it's got a port here, which I imagine the oil pressure comes in. And then on the side, there's, a, I, I, there's another port here, and I guess that just goes back into the oil sump, right? So the oil sump is in this area here. So then this comes down in a certain way and then there's there's threads here threads here and then the plug threads into the bottom of this and then there's a spring and then there's a, a plunger that goes in here so the spring acts on the plunger oil pressure comes in here pushes down on this thing 
and exposes this port here and oil just returns back to the sump, I think. So what had actually happened is this sleeve or this plunger wasn't, so the, the engine builder didn't clean this out properly. So this plunger wasn't able to return back this way. The spring wasn't able to push it. So it was hung up in here basically. It was hung up at a point where I believe it was exposing this port enough that oil was just bypassing the whole time. So um, what I did, and because this, 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 uh, this plunger is, 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 it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a cup actually, like a, like a, it's a cylinder and it's capped off at this, this end. So what I did is I took a piece of, a piece of wood, this, this piece of wood here actually, and I just made it so it fit inside that, um, in, up inside that plunger. And then <clears throat> I uh, put it up inside the, the bore and just kept spinning it. Actually, I put a, put a drill on it and just turned it slowly and just worked it up and down and it, you know, it, it cleaned the hole out. And, and then I was able, the, the thing would you put it up in there, it would just fall out. So uh, we put it back together and we got like 45 pounds of pressure. So that was good. So it solved that problem. And now uh, <clears throat> the latest thing on this is uh, the fuel pump. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a rod that runs on the camshaft, comes up, up to the fuel pump. Maybe I can show you the brand new one. And um, <clears throat> put the camera down for a sec here. Hey, see my nostrils. So, a fuel pump. There's a there's a rod that comes up from the cam and it engages this, this lever here. And um, <clears throat> I don't know what's going on with the, the fuel pump that's in there right now, but um, we took it off and then I, when I pushed on this, it didn't seem like it was doing anything. It was just flopping around. So then I got a screwdriver and I pushed it all the way in and, and then it, it's, it it slipped off and this came snapping back and then, and then it was engaged, it was working. So, so we put it back on and the engine stalled again, you know, I don't know, about two minutes later. And so now I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put a new fuel pump on it. So, um, I don't know what's going on there. There must be another <clears throat> linkage rod beyond this, this, this lever arm here and it's somehow it's com coming out of place and, you know, but, so without that, the fuel pump obviously isn't going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on right now and hopefully that's the end of our problems. Actually, the, the little, this motor runs really well. The carbs right out of the box were set up pretty nice. I think they're a bit much for this engine, but, uh, you know, we can, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's jets available you can you can get for them and you know lean them out a bit but uh, we'll see how it goes I, you know, hopefully take it for a little test drive here today So this is what I'm talking about with this fuel filter. See this arm here? See, I don't know if you noticed on the other one, but it was more flush with the bottom of, of the housing. But see this? Nothing. There's nothing happening there. All I'm doing is pushing against the spring. So let's just see what happens if I push it in all the way again. 
and I can make it fix itself like I did last time. Yeah. So it's hooped. So Simon has this uh, little uh, picture story here, I guess you want to call it, of, uh, of the car. And that's kind of what it looks like now, I guess. Maybe not. No, that was, that was, that was pre-repair there. So you can see the extent of the, the fire damage. See the, the resin just burned right out of the, out of the mat. So it's just, then and here's where we're, we started pulling chunks out of it. So then, uh, so that's the, that's the patch we made out of a mold. And looks like we got it. Yeah, we got it uh, bonded on there at that point. And then there's some uh, carbon glass filler going on. More fiberglass filler. Sanding, more sanding. Some bonder going on. I guess that must be primer stage right there. And then the dash, the fire went spread into the interior, but the dash was a little scorched, so that had to be fixed up. Inside of the, uh, that's the, uh, the new uh, engine cover. And I think that's a picture of it back at Simon's place. Yeah, so. Yeah, and that looks like maybe fresh out of the paint booth. So, I mean, it, uh, it did turn out really well. Um, I mean, there's, there's a few little telltales, but uh, I think the car looks great. Just spent a little bit of time getting this linkage sorted out here. So, two carburetors. What do you want to call this? Fuel linkage transfer rod or whatever. I don't know what you call it, but so that connects the two levers on the end of the shaft. And then there's a little Heinz end here. Link Heinz end down there. And then there's a an arm on the throttle shaft. So there's a little bit of geometry to consider here. So these two rods, they're going down at an angle. You can see that one. I can't really see it, sorry. But it, it goes down from here to the carburetor at an angle. So you want these two rods to be basically at the same angle. I mean, I didn't put a meter on it, but, but you know, just eyeballing it from both sides, they appear to be pretty much at the same angle, right? So that's important because the more you angle a uh, connecting rod, basically the shorter it gets, right? So if you got one leaning way over like this and one leaning going straight down, when you start to push them down, they're going to push down at different rates. One isn't going to reach as far as the other. And then the, the arm on the carburetor. So the distance from here to here has to be pretty close. Well, it has, it, it ha, ideally, it should be exactly the same distance from here to here as it is from here to here on this carburetor. So when you go to, so otherwise, you're going to get one carburetor opening up more than the other one. So 
And because there's no balance tube between these two carburetors, you're going to get more of a signal on one side of the engine than you are going to get on the other side. And I, I would imagine there's a little bit of leeway there. I mean, ideally you want it to be exactly the same. Otherwise you're going to get, you're going to be pulling more power on one side of the engine and it's going to feel rough. It's going to feel like you're, it's not going to, it's not going to be a smooth running engine. It's going to be, it's going to be thumping harder on one side than it is the other. So, I mean, because this thing goes bang, 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 back and forth like this, it doesn't bang, bang on one side and then bang, bang on the other side. It goes back and forth. So that does smooth out the power a little bit, right? But you want the same kind of, you want both carburetors synced. They have to open exactly the same. So I've got this thing set up now. So when I go to full throttle, um, and then I push, if I push down on, uh, on the individual throttle levers, I can push down on this one just a tiny bit, and that one's bottomed out. So, I mean, that's kind of as good as it's going to get here. Um, I mean, I guess I could play around a bit more. So what I we'll actually ended up doing is bending this, this one to, to move, the, move it out to match the, this rod angle a bit better too. And to shorten the distance from here to here. So, I mean, it was way worse before. Like it was, I don't know, maybe an eighth of a, not, not quite an eighth of a turn on the throttle shaft, but it was quite a bit worse. So now it's just, it's just very little. It's, it's, it's you know, I, I probably could play around with it a bit more. I could, this one already had a kink in the, see it's got a kink in it there. I could probably straighten that out a little bit. Because this distance from here to here is a little shorter on this side than it is on that side. So, and I didn't want to bend this out too much because that would flatten the angle here. So it's a bit of a juggling act, right? So, anyways, I'm going to call it good. I don't want to mess around with this too much longer. Um, Simon is not happy with it. He can, he can play with it. But um, I think it's time to take this thing for a little burn. I'm going to take this, uh, I've got this remote oil filter, or oil filter, remote oil gauge. This is a, a mechanical gauge that I screwed into the port where the sending unit was because when we were trying to deal with the uh, oil pressure issue, I wanted to verify that the gauge was actually good in the car and it, it appears that it is. It, they, they both were reading the same. So, um, so I'm going to pull that off, put the sending unit back in, take this thing for a little burn. Just back from a little road test. Uh, the car ran pretty well. Um, it uh, got a bit of a bog right off the right off idle when you're taking off. But um, you know, I'm, I haven't really messed around with the carbs too much. But they're pretty big carburetors, so might. Uh, might not get away from that so much. Uh, there's enough carburation on this thing for a small V8. So uh, like, you know, easily for like a 300 cubic inch V8. So uh, you may have to just, you know, get used to that and soft pedal a little bit, a little bit uh, off the line. Um, but you know, maybe I can, maybe I can fiddle with it a bit and clean that up a bit. But, but it ran really nice, uh, cruises along really good. and. Anyway, so uh, Simon will be back up this weekend, and and uh, we'll do a little, a little bit more work on it, and uh, maybe do a little more, more tuning, get it sorted out a bit. But uh, that's it for now. Um, thanks for watching this one. Uh, you know, this this car's been pretty interesting. 
you know, there's some different things that I really haven't done before. I haven't really messed around with dual carbs uh, at all, really. Uh, you know, lots of uh, lots of four barrel stuff and you know, B8 stuff. Not not a whole lot of Volkswagen stuff, but uh, you know, it's all nuts and bolts. So, anyways, thanks again, and uh, see you next time.